Do we watch to see what we saw before? Do we watch to see a version of the country which we had before? Or do we watch to actually see what's happening now? And to hear what's happening. I say to someone, like, just to hear things. If you watch network television, with a few exceptions, like I think The Good Wife is actually quite excellent and well written. But with most of it, and in this country, every time they say something, I've heard it before. Nothing that comes out of their mouth surprises me. Just surprise me, forget shock. I just, oh, I've, that's, well, that's sexier, or this and that. But really good cable television, like Boss, the Kelsey Grammer thing about the mayor of Chicago, <clears> is so <throat> terrifyingly good and ugly about that city's politics, you know? Right. And uh, Homeland, and like I see a couple of these Brit British shows, they do say things that I've never heard before. <laughs> they have thoughts that I've you know, never seen it in television. In a lot of before. the scripts that I read, I, I, I said to my agent, you know, there's four kinds of scripts now. Uh, there's excellent, there's interesting, there's boring, and there's toxic. I say, <laughs> I do the top three, I don't do the bottom three. <laughs> yeah. And there's like, I don't call these scripts dialogue anymore, I call them explain a log, confess a log, conclude a log, uh, romance a log, but there's no dialogue anymore. No, no. But I think that's what you're talking about yeah. when you say life doesn't go like this, like a good teller, it goes like this. And so how do you write dialogue when you need it to go like that? Well, you can't really. You know the end, of, as soon as I see the conclusion scene on Flashpoint and I, I know we're in the concluding two scenes, I know exactly where it's gonna go, mm -hmm. I know the words are gonna come out of their mouth, I know what's gonna happen here and I go, why? Why? Well, because they're directive, and I've heard this indirectly, you know, from those two lovely actor people who created that show, that they were told uh, there's only one kind of a story there that they really wanted to tell that network, and that is there's no bad person, it's just a good person who's in, in a bad situation. Oh. They, wouldn't go, they couldn't go anywhere else with that. That's largely what their directive was, so imagine that. Five seasons of holding only that, you know, this is not a bad person, this is someone... His kid's not getting the proper medical attention, he's like losing his, you know what I mean? That, that, and that's what they had to hold to, so that they felt that their audience couldn't engage with the bad person. Now, Kelsey Grammer on Boss, again, that's a, that's a, that's a cable show. He's the worst person in the world. <laughs> you know? He says, I'm a bad man and I've done a lot of bad fucking things, but I did it for my city, you know? And yes, he's all, he did, it's just, some of it is just horrific. But, you know, they deal with it in Shakespeare, they deal with it all, you know, uh, that's who he was, you know, he's, uh, so that's when you got that kind of, if, it, it's like a quarter, you, it's basically that, it's the same thing with actors, they're keeping their writers in that, and if, if you're interested, if you're comfortable with it, no one's ever said stay, no one in TV, not even in CBC that was supportive, or has ever said go farther to me, no one's ever said go farther, you can do it, whatever you want, no one's ever said just do it, George, just get in there and rip it apart. You know, and it's, it's make us think, you know, so that you're even, there's too much fear about it, you know? There's too much, uh, I, my response what? is, how bad can it be? Fear of what? Fear of, I don't know what. I mean, fear of what? I mean, my thing, I said this to one, how bad can it be? Can it be any worse than any, some of the stuff you've got on your network? They don't want to hear that, you know? I mean, it's, it, come on. Well, they think what they're doing is very good. Well, they think it's good enough. You know, largely. I mean, the best people you'll meet at these networks are the development people, the ones at the bottom of the, you know, the decision making. And they're the ones, you know, they can kid you into thinking you've got a hope of getting something on it because they're smart and they're active and they get it. But then they go away and they try and sell it to the, the bubble, you know, the mark, and that there's no, it, that's disappointing for them too. So that's a soul crushing job, the development people at these networks because, uh, well, like I say, they've got to take it upstairs. But that's where Christine Shipman came from. She's upstairs. Well, she started there, right, but she went upstairs, and I don't know what, how effective she was, how the people up there were, but the ones I have dealt with in the last few years, the development people, are actually quite excellent. Not that we're making a target of Christine Shipman. I, think <laughs> I actually know her, and I think she's a wonderful lady, but she's part of a system yeah. that is now saying things like that to you and actually creating a kind of narrative with such diminished expectations that I, I go, first, why are we spending money on it, and second, what's going to happen to my country if those are all the stories you can tell, you know, like you say, the parameters of the stories are, there's no bad people, there's only good people who have problems, yeah. you know, there's no, we're not going to give narratives of despair, we're not going to give narratives of, of, of loss, of defeat, we'll only do the kind of rosy little sentimental narratives in the middle. Well, if that's all the stories that you're telling, the culture is telling itself, we're done, oh, because yeah. they don't give you the reflexes to deal with things. Oh, that's true. You know? And why do they think that the audience can't take more? I don't, I don't Why think do they, they think the audience can't take, or is it only the people they want in their demographic to deliver their advertiser? 
and they don't want to push people out of that demographic out of that demographic they want to deliver to the advertisers. Well, I don't even know why they think they know that. I don't even know why they, they think have whole rooms full of people doing marketing surveys. But they're wrong. That's what I think they're doing. How do you know they're wrong, George? But I feel my bones how do you that they're, know wrong. they're wrong. I know they're wrong. I, I know want to they agree with you, but how do you know that? I just don't think you can know those things. I think they're just out of touch. They go into that room as But you don't said. their salaries and their bonuses depend on them being right? <laughs> no, I think they be, they depend on convincing people that they're right. <laughs> you know? It's a big difference. Someone said to me, actually during this whole factory thing, that's because um, I was upset about how people were behaving, some of them. And they, someone said, uh, well, you can't make people behave honorably. And I thought, that's probably true. But then I said, but can we make them act like they're honorable? <laughs> can we get them to act like they're honorable? So that might confuse the people to be the more people acting honorably and doing the right thing, even though down, down the side they don't care or they don't want to, you know? So maybe that's it. Maybe they act like they just know. And I do think they do. Like, we know this about the Democrat, but that's not true. You know what I mean? It's just not true. I think people respond to quality and they connect to things that are about their lives. I want to... I want George to repeat that. He thinks people respond to quality, and I find that an optimistic statement that will get me through the next four hours. No, I do. I think that you give them something, and they will, you know, people turn away from bad things because it does not, it's not got anything to do with them, you know? And, and if you give them stuff, I think especially young people are looking for something really, and they can access. Well, here's the thing about network TV. It might just be dead anyway and not worrying about it, because I don't know your kids, but my kids don't go near it. It's all, they get it differently, right? They access it differently. And when Google and Netflix start making TV series on their own, then network television is dead. And I think they kind of know it's dead unless they kind of change. Because a lot of stuff, and going back to writers and bottom of the totem pole here, that's true. And the model in the States is different, I think. It's changing because the writers... In cable. In cable. They run, they run the show. I mean, and even in network, they're mostly showrunners. They still have to deal with uh, the network. So you know, why is the executive level at cable? different than the executive level at CTV, Global, ABC, NBC, CBS? No, no, no commercials. You start, you buy the package, you pay, you pay, you subscribe, right? It's a big deal, apparently, <laughs> you know? So, uh, they subscribe, subscribers and the subscribers know what they're getting. They're getting the Sopranos, you know? They're not getting <clears throat> Hawaii Five-0. You know, they're getting this stuff. They're getting Louis C.K. They're not getting Seinfeld. They're getting, you know, they're getting, they subscribe. They know what they've, they've done. They're paying for their drama thinking, rather than thinking, I'm getting it free. Yeah. But you're really paying it through, but you're advertising. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually paying for it. And they pay for what they like. And, it's, and their audiences are going up as more and more people discover that they like this stuff. That right. it's, it's, it's liberating, it's different, and it, it actually is, taking some things on that have some to do with their lives.